Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we will see how to create this kind of composition and rendering. We will first see how to import models from Megascan to 3ds Max and how to configure them properly. We are also going to see how to create an atmosphere with the HDRI Rise to highlight or product with softbox, texture or perfume bottle and add code session with Typeflow. For those who want to go further, a bonus tutorial is available on Patreon which will show you how to export your camera from 2ds Max to After Effects, as well as bring your project to life by incorporating particles with Trapcon Particular. Ok, let's go for the tutorial. Ok, so the first thing to do is to download the bridge to have access to high quality 3D assets. For that, we'll go to quicksol.com slash bridge and we will download it. Once the download is done and installed, we will end up here. Of course, think about creating an account or logging in if you have already an Epic account. In this bridge, we will be able to have access to a lot of assets as you can see here. You can also search by filter, for example, rock. Here you see a lot of 3D model and texture related to the research. You can also have access to many collections that allow you to directly see the asset in the universe you want. You also have a tab with the model you have already downloaded. Here we can find in 3D assets the model that I used for this project, mostly forest rock. Inside this asset, you can see the rendering, the textures, as well as a 3D vision of the model, which really allow you to have an overview of what the asset will look like in your scene. Okay, then once we have decided on the asset we want to integrate, we can select here the resolution and download the model. Of course, for me, it's already done. I will now go here and select export setting. We can obviously choose the software where we want to export. For me, it will be 3ds Max. Check that the plugin is installed. I can now go back and export. We have the message here which confirms that all is good. But if I go to 3ds Max, I see this error message. It's because I have to choose a compatible rendering engine. I will therefore create a VRA cam to activate VRA. I can now restart the export and we see that my model has been correctly imported. It's perfect. I'm going to rotate it to see that everything is good. I can see the mesh of my model and maybe apply a turbo smooth to have a cleaner look. Great. We can of course go back to the mesh and modify it as we want. Here I will select some vertices. Activate the soft selection and modify my mesh to give it the shape I want. Ok, great. Now we will see the textures that are associated. We have here the diffuse, a bump map and a roughness. What we can do to further improve our model is to add displacement. So I will add the V-Red displacement mode. Duplicate the V-Ray bitmap used for my diffuse and select the displacement map which is in the downloaded file. I can now drag and drop the texture in the map slot. And all is perfect. I will now just create a V-Ray plane to lighten my scene a little and reveal my rock model. And I can now render. We see that our model is really very beautiful and detailed and the displacement really adds a final touch. It's perfect. Now we'll move on to the creation of our scene. So, here we have the perfume model in the center of the scene. And I duplicated the previously imported model around this one in order to create a rock environment. I used the same model that I just rotated and scaled to have a more natural look, but you can of course import as many rock models as you want. To finish this simple scene, I also imported a vegetation asset and I proceeded in the same way by scale and rotate in order to give something organic for my environment. And once we are satisfied with our scene, we move on to the lighting. I have here a dome light and several very plain. I will for the moment just keep the dome light to show you the process. Ok, so I only have this damn light and I'm going to launch a render. We can see that we have a very interesting rendering. I will now show you the texture I used. It's a simple very bit map with an HDRI that you can find on many sites such as HDRI Heaven. 
We can rotate the GRI live and see the result to choose the atmosphere that we prefer. Don't forget to select spherical mapping for your HDRI to work well. An interesting option can also be to play on the inverse gamma to increase or decrease the shadow or the intensity. Here I just link my v map to a color correction to simply reduce the saturation of my HDRI which I find too strong. And of course this color correction is linked to my v dom light. What you can also do is go to the dom light menu and activate log to texture. With this option, you no longer need to go back to the material editor. You can simply rotate your GRI directly in the viewport. It's very convenient. Okay, so I'm not going to close all that and we will go see the other light. I can activate, for example, this light above. We can see on the prof room the result. Before and after. And what we want is for this light to only illuminate the prof room and not the decor. To do this is very simple. Just go to exclude and select the asset you want to ignore by light. You can see all the rock assets that I have excluded. So I select what I want and just pass them to exclude with this arrow. It's really a very useful option. I have here another very soft light to eliminate it. And what we want now is to create a beautiful reflection on the side of the bottle. For that I activate this very light and we can see that the light really creates a very pretty reflection. We have on one side a very defined side with this beautiful line and on the other side something much more diffuse. It's very aesthetic. Ok, I will now show you how to do that. I have here a very soft box. And I go to map, very, and here very soft box. I now connect this softbox to my map slot to show you from scratch. We can see here the light that is not very beautiful for the moment. What we can do now is to play with the gradient. I will just activate the V vignette. And you can see that one has the effect we want. We are just going to select flip to invert the gradient. Okay, it's perfect like that. I will do the same now with the U value. And I will also invert the gradient because I want the effect to go from the top to the bottom. You can also play with the gradient to accentuate the effect or not. You can also add a little frame that will soften the wall light. Okay, it's good for the setting of this softbox. It's really allow you to create very interesting light, especially for project rendering. I will now activate all the light that has been created with the same process and which really allow us to highlight our perform bottle. Okay, so we will now see how the bottle was textured. It's really very simple. I created a very blend with my transparent texture and the text are created with a white texture revealed by black and white map. I will only leave my glass texture for now to see how it was created. We can go into the diffuse and obviously change the color as we want. We have a reflection to the max with a bit of metalness. 0.2 is a good value I think. If I go above I see that it's not very realistic. I have here a refraction at the max also, but we can see that this refraction is controlled by a gradient map. I'm just going to delete it for the moment, and we see that it's completely transparent. The IOR is really weak because we don't want too much deformation. If I increase it, you can see that it's not very realistic. 1.05 is not bad, I think. We are not going to see my gradient map. It goes from black to white, passing through some intermediate value. Basically, black will produce no refraction and white will refract to the max. To create a gradient, it's very simple. Just go to Map, General, and Gradient Ramp. I can therefore relink my gradient to my refract map. Ok, perfect. What we can do now is color this refraction a little bit. For that, we'll go in Fog Color. And here we are going to play with the bias value. If I reduce it, you can see that it really affects the color of the reflection. 
We can also modify the fog multiplier to color without altering the hue too much. Okay. To reveal my text, I created here a simple white color texture. I therefore connect it to my cut one. And we can see here that my text appear on my model. For that, I just created a black and white map with my text and I link it to a color correction because the value has to be reversed. You can see that if I activate the normal mode that we have the opposite effect. So I go back with the invert effect and then all I have to do is to connect the white material to my code 2 to reveal my second text which was created in the same way. Ok, perfect. Now that we have our texture, the decor and the light, we will add the final touch by creating a condensation effect on the bottle. For this, I will create a typeflow setup, open editor, and I'm going to create a burst operator. Start and end to zero, and a total of 1000 particles. I will now add a position object, and pick my perform. Here's the cap and now the bottle. Perfect. I will now switch to sprite to see my particles and I realize that there's not enough of them. I therefore return to my brush and I will increase them. Maybe 2000. Great. Okay, now I will go to tight flow and I will create a time measure. Here and pick my type flow setup. I can now hide the type flow setup. And if I zoom in, we can see here the time measure, but it is really not pretty. I will first reduce the absolute radius to 0 0.25. Okay, good. Decrease the resolution to 0 0.1 to have a better look. Yeah, it starts to look great. Add variation to have sphere of different size. That's nice, but now we're going to try to burn it all together. So I'm going to add a relax modifier. Value to 1. And I also increase the particle radius in the time measure. I can now re-increase the iteration in the relax to bind the particles more. And I think we have a very interesting result. I can run a render to see what happens. And we can see that we really have something very alive on our bottle. It's not just simple spheres. Finally, we just have to texture this effect. I will therefore create another material and select the water preset. I can now apply my texture to my time measure. And we can see that the result is really very interesting. The time measure really gives us a very organic rendering. You can of course play with the look of your particle as well as the number as you want. Ok guys, that's it for this tutorial. If you want to go further and know how to export your camera from 2ds Max to After Effects to increase text or other elements, and if you want to know how to play with trap code particular to add and control particles and give more life to your project, you can find this as a bonus tutorial on my Patreon. As always, don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work, and you can follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon if you want. See you soon for next tutorial guys. Bye.